Hey there, nice sunny day today outside. So sunny, in fact, that I'm having a hard time seeing through the viewfinder with all the glare here. Anyway, today we are going to look at a piece of equipment from a branch of the history of technology that gets no respect. And that branch is that of the history of sonar. Now, uh, when you think of electronics history from well, the 20s and 30s and 40s. Well, you hear a lot about, of course, radio history because, well, you know, the, the big networks popped up, FM came into being, and of course, then World War II. Radar, the history of radar gets a huge amount of attention. But sonar does not. And that's a shame because the history of sonar is extremely interesting. In fact, sonar technology is extremely interesting. And uh, one of the problems is that the history that is out there is really pretty screwed up and uh, frankly a little biased because if you read most of the, uh, the histories of sonar, the few that are out there, well, you know, they pretty much uh, focus in on ASDIC, A-S-D-I-C, which is essentially the British name for sonar. And well, if you read those, basically, it's a British history and kind of the the history of US and German sonar is ignored uh, and sometimes plain old wrong so uh, well I don't know if I'll ever be able to change anyone's mind but uh, maybe this quick video will show that yes indeed there was US sonar back in the early 30s and yes, this is part of my 1930s military, in this case Navy, of course, 1930s military electronics collection. Let's take a look at the tag. This is a CBY50010 receiver amplifier. Of course, uh, fans of military electronics from World War II well, when you hear CBY, a bell should go off. And if you look at the lower part of the tag, you can see Booten Research Corporation. Yes, the Booten that uh, I mentioned in the last video, the one about the Ballantine Digital Mechanical Voltmeter. Yes, Booten, that little, well, pre-Silicon Valley in New Jersey that was kind of the place to be in, in the late 20s and through the 30s and in, into the 40s. Well, this was one of the first companies to settle there and yes, CBY mutated into Aircraft Radio Corporation. Interestingly, one of their first products was this, a part of Model JK equipment. And you can see from the, uh, the date, 1933. So yes, there was U.S. sonar equipment back in the 30s. In fact, there was a lot of it. Most destroyers had it. Most, uh, most capital ships had sonar, mostly for, uh, yes, for uh, uh, submarine detection, but also a couple other weird things uh, like harbor defense and stuff like that. But uh, this is an early version. Now, of course, sonar history dates back to pre-World War I, and uh, that information is, of course, really sketchy. Um, that's one of the problems is, well, no one really cared about sonar history and uh, no one saved anything. Very, very little of it survives and very, very little documentation survives. I uh, scoop it up when I can. Well, the early stuff and the documentation when I can, I'll get to a little bit of that later. But yeah, this thing showed up on eBay, and, well, no one knew what the hell it was, basically. It was uh, floated around on uh, the mill surplus lists. But I ended up with it because, well, I kind of knew what it was. Um, now, JK was a designation for an early passive sonar equipment the Navy used back in, well, 1933 is when this was con contracted. Now the weird thing about uh, World War II and, well, just pre-World War II, Navy 
sonar naming is with with the sonar they kind of started breaking the rules and JK turned into kind of a saying for a lot of different types of passive sonars and uh, like another one was QC yeah, there actually was a QC equipment that was an active sonar but uh, for some reason it became kind of a catch-all for all sorts of uh, active sonars well JK was kind of a catch-all for a lot of uh, passive sonars through World War II and even into the 50s I think but this is the actual JK equipment this is the receiver amplifier I don't have a manual for this, so of course I'm going to beg for a manual. I do have a number of 1930s uh, sonar manuals from the U.S. Navy, and uh, yes, they do show that, that the technology was there. The technology was there. Uh, it wasn't some black hole that all of a sudden World War II started and, and the U.S. Navy had no sonar. No, we had a lot of it. We had a lot of it. It was installed on many, many ships, and uh, active, passive, different types of of transducers and receivers and such like that so no it wasn't just a British thing the US actually did have plenty of sonar uh, the technology transfer went both ways during World War II uh, we used some of their sonar equipment they used some of ours yes anyway let's take a look at this big black box and yeah this is heavy it says 60 pounds and it's every every bit of 60 pounds so, uh, yeah, we got um, a black box. <laughs> as far as I can tell, this is, this is the whole JK, with the exception of the actual microphone. And that, of course, uh, I'm assuming probably has a drivetrain associated with it. Uh, so you can steer the microphone, uh, and it, of course, is underwater. Well, I don't have that. I have no information on that. I couldn't even find an AV type number for it in the big catalog. And um, will I ever find one? No, probably not. Uh, but this is the receiver. And you can see, well, it's got a nice big velvet veneer for tuning 15 to 50. And we will see that that is actually kilohertz. Well, in this case, you'd call it kilocycles. <laughs> we have an input jack, a volume control. Power switch, modulation on off, that's basically a beat oscillator, and phones. And there's a meter missing. And of course, I don't know what that meter is, so once again, a, a manual would be extremely handy so I could figure out what that meter is. What the meter is used for, I don't know either. Is it for uh, checking the power? Because I'm pretty sure this just runs off of uh, ship's power. Uh, is it uh, signal strength? I don't know. Anyway, let's open it up. Nice aluminum box. And we have some very typical, very high quality construction here. Very typical of the 1930s Navy stuff. We have a bunch of tubes. Now, this appears to be a power transformer. There's a rectifier. It's an 80. Interestingly, it's got a, a Jan 80, so this, this thing was probably used well into World War II. Um, you know, hey, it worked. The other tubes, you can see printed on the thing, 56s, 58s. And uh, we've got these nice shields here. Very typical 1930s shields. I can see a nice little 56 down in there. So we'll scoot that guy back on. Now, uh, this is the tuning capacitor. Let's take a look at that. Get these nuts off. I see there's a little cap I'll need to find. Looks like a standard part. One of those uh, hole plugs. Maybe we can get this off nicely without dropping those set screws. There we go. And we've got a very nice looking capacitor. 
velvet veneer needs a little bit of help with some lube basically but uh judging from how this is built i would say this looks like a trf and look at that tag down there can you see that tag there tuning range 15 to 50 kilocycles so yeah why why uh, above the uh the range of human hearing well it just works better for for uh passive sonar you know you don't actually need to hear sort of you know well back at back then i should say you don't really need to hear exactly what's going on you just have to hear signal in the back nothing it's just a place for a cable that's where i think ship's power came from I couldn't find any sort of information about a motor generator or, or anything like that. And considering it does have a rectifier tube and a nice big transformer there, the thing that is, well, this thing. Uh, that's a huge transformer, come to think of it. It may have a choke in there, too. I don't know. But, um, yeah, apparently just run off a of ship's power. So, yeah, do I have a manual? No, I don't have a manual. Do I want a manual? Of course I want a manual. So hey, you know if you got if you've got a lead on a manual, of course, uh, send me a note, leave a comment. And like I said, this is for the actual real Model JK equipment. You know there were a lot of things called JK in the U.S. Navy, and like I said, it became a catch-all term. Well, this is the real deal. This is the the very first, the real JK. And this one I think is serial number twelve. How many they made? I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, interesting bit of technology. It is kind of a shame that, that sonar doesn't get the, uh, the attention it deserves because it was high tech. It, of course, still continues to be high tech. And of course, mostly today, it's extremely classified. Past 1950, uh, sonar sets became extremely complex high de high tech devices and classification was 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 very high typically and and still is because well hey submarines almost anything involved with submarines is, is highly classified so uh yeah information on the uh sets past uh about 1960s is very scarce but yes information on uh the early 30s uh sets or any of the 1930s sets is really pretty sketchy and, and it's almost non-existent i have some like to find a place where i can archive it but unfortunately there's so few people interested in this stuff it's kind of a shame because i at one point i had a lot of sonar equipment and i had to get rid of a lot of it just had to thin down and i was only over, only to rehome a few pieces of the World War II gear. Uh, I, I, uh, I had a big Western Electric, uh, it was a QHB sonar stack. It's now currently on the Slater, that's the Destroyer Escort in Albany, New York. And I had a, um, a QHA, I think, um, transducer, the actual, well, so to speak, microphone. <laughs> Giant beach ball size hunk of metal. Boy, is that heavy. That's actually at the Pampanito now in the Bay Area. And I've, I've given away a few, other, uh, a few other bits of sonar gear, but I tried, I tried giving it away to the museum ships and such like that, circulated a, a little list and almost no response. So unfortunately, I don't have a lot of that stuff anymore. This, however, fits perfectly into my collection and no, it's not going away. <laughs> And hey, if I could find other pieces of 1930s sonar gear, I'd snap it up in an instant. Manuals too, of course. Okay, well, hopefully you liked the video. It's kind of an odd one. I, I don't know if there are any other <laughs> videos on YouTube about old, old sonar gear. Well, someone had to do it. Hey, if you have any uh, comments on this, leads on a manual, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Even pictures. I'd love to have pictures of one of these things in an installation. Maybe there's, maybe the Navy has some in their archives. I don't know. Who knows? I'd like to hear from you. So, yeah, leave a comment. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye now.